Where, where's my uh, jacket? Over here. I'm going to turn off my phone. Oh, so it rings. Right by the camera. Uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. Right through it. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> and welcome to Brandy Live. Um, I'm doing? Uh, we are going live right here, right now. Um, you can't find it? No. We're um, trying to find a start watch party. Um, she wants to do a watch party. Anyway, How we do that? let's welcome my guest today, Miss Michelle Snyder. Hi. Yes. Hi, everybody. I can't figure out how to do the start watch party. Like, um, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Just Maybe go here. to plain Facebook. Um, you know technology, children. Technology is a crazy thing. Um, so... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. What about like that? Yes. Yeah, you can turn the volume down. Oh. All right, all right. And in the background, you see her lovely husband, Keith. He's in the studio with us today. He's just going to be sitting here, you know, watching, taking notes. Oh, you, did you turn it down? Just turn, you had it. I just did? turn the volume down, yeah. Oh, really? Yes, girl. Oh, Lord. See, See, technology. You would think. You would think. Okay. Yeah, just so then I'll just... Uh -huh. Oh, perfect. And okay. so if if someone wants to watch, then Honey, Kate can start a share. Honey, take the phone. Okay. Uh, take two. <laughs> here we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, Michelle, to Brandywine Studio. One day here. Uh, it's so fun to be here. I've known Yay. you for what? Oh. I think since the first day we got to Santa Fe, pretty much. Like 16 years. Okay, is that how long it's been? It's been that long. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. And she, Michelle is from New York, the city prop. Yes, honey. New York City's in the house. <laughs> Y'all know I love me some city folk. <laughs> Being from the country and all. Yes, honey. Okay, so Michelle is a published author. And we're going to talk about it. Uh, her book, Plant Your Money Tree. Yes, A Guide to Growing Your Wealth. And it is available, Michelle? Well, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on our website, marketgage.com. And it's also available on audible.com if you want to listen to it, which a lot of people when they're driving like to do. Well, awesome. Can I just add, you look absolutely adorable tonight. I love this outfit. Thank you. This is the first time I've been on camera in months and months and months where people can actually see that I have a bottom half of my body. Oh, yes, girl. <laughs> they, they see the bottom of me, too, honey. Thank God I did my legs. <laughs> Say, well, cheers, Michelle. Cheers. Okay, so we're going to, um, today we're talking finance goals for 2021. And Michelle is here to share her knowledge. What is your background? Well, I actually started out in life as a special education teacher, and by luck, I met a girl when I lived in Manhattan. I, I like to tell the story that I did everything that my parents told me to do. I got married. I lived near them. I became a teacher. And then one day I woke up and said, this isn't my life. This is their life for me. So I dumped the husband. <laughs> um, I moved into Manhattan. And I kept the teaching job until I met this girl who worked for Merrill Lynch. And she brought me down to the Kamai's Exchange, which was in the World Trade Center. And I just went, wow. And it was yeah. tremendously crazy. Back in those days was the heyday when people were trading gold and silver. And do you ever see the movie Trading Places? Oh, yeah. That's where I worked, like okay. right there. So when I saw that kind of action, I was like, wow, I need to be here. And that's how my life changed. And I was down on the floor for 13 years. Uh, while I was there, I met my husband, who is sitting here to the left that you saw briefly before. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and we then became traders upstairs, which means we left the floor and we started trading from electronically, which is what everybody does now. And then I joined him in his business, DataView, about 12 years ago. And now, currently, what I do is I really take my special education background and my financial background, and I combine them so that I can really teach people in a language they can understand, 
Oh, I like that. Mm. Hence the book. The book is written in very plain English, very anecdotal, and it's a good foundation place for people to start. Okay, because I am very special ed. Hello, <laughs> you heard it here, people. Special ed 101. <laughs> yes, children. I ain't gonna lie about it. I'm not ashamed. You know, the first, the key to success is admitting your faults. Absolutely. And you know what? When it comes to money, Everybody's special ed, I've discovered. Hello? Yeah, yeah, because it brings up everything and people get terrified. Oh, I'm scared to death. Skirt, I tell you. <laughs> it, so, how did you get, how did you start the book? Well, we already had a foundation we called phases, which means basically that when the market is in certain places, whether it's up or down, People know when it's up, they call it bullish. They know when it's down because it's called bearish. But there's these in-between parts. And so this is almost like a wheel, like a navigation system. Okay. And it was the easiest place for me to begin to explain because if you could just look at that we all learned in the third grade, basic bar chart, and you can look at two moving averages, which we all learn, and we all think in moving averages, or think in terms of averages, average calories a day, average batting average if you're into baseball, average temperature, you know, whatever it is, we all know that. If you put those two things together, what I do is I tell you what each phase is, what it means, what it means for investing, what it means if you want to send your kid off to some major in college, what's trending, if you want to change careers, if it's time to buy a house, borrow money from a bank. This is becomes your navigation system. So it's kind of simple, really. It's a compass to guide people in a very fundamental way. So that's how I got started. Okay, awesome. So let's see. You know, I'm just going to pick up the book. <laughs> just going to, oh, she even autographed it to me. <laughs> Told y'all I'm special ed. <laughs> I'm going to have to get the audible, though. Um. Oh, look, there's even graphs and charts in here. Girl. <laughs> well, it's a picture book for me. <laughs> um, okay. I, okay. I digress. I digress. You know, how does one get started in investing money? Well, what's so interesting about the pandemic is that it created something that I don't think I've ever seen in the 40 years I've been in the business. And that is the little guy coming into the market, what they call the retail investor, and starting to buy the market, some of it with their stimulus money, some of it because they didn't have to pay their mortgage or their rent that particular month, they didn't have to pay back their student loans. People got a moratorium, right, throughout mm -hmm. the whole pandemic. So since they were home with nothing to do, and the market was at a point now where it looked so cheap, People came in and started buying the market. So what, this is a really good time to talk about how to get started because the retail investor is really making headlines. I'm sure many of you have heard about GameStop and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, BlackBerry and AMC. These stocks that these Reddit kids came in and bought up and killed some of the hedge funds by having them lose a lot of money. I'm not saying necessarily that that should be done. What I'm saying is that the environment now mm -hmm. is such where it's really easy to start investing because you don't have to pay any commissions, zero commissions. You have these uh, micro, which means you can take something like buy, let's say, the S&P 500, which is the top five companies, and you could buy a fraction of that. So you can start with like a few hundred dollar investment. They're allowing basically a fractional ownership of stocks where you can have a club and each one of you buys a, a piece of that particular share. So that it's never been easier to start trading with very little money. The problem can be though, you need a little bit of education, but we can talk about that. Okay, okay. So for someone who's never invested, who's never thought about investing, I invest in shoes, <laughs> as you see. Um, I invest in my hair, because you know, girl needs a hair, right? I invested in my pearls, or actually, Santa invested in pearls for me this time. But anyway, as someone who wants to start investing, you know, what would you suggest? Well, you considering know, that everything you just mentioned, there's probably a company that makes the clothes that you wear, the pearls that you bought, the wigs that you wear, or whatever it is. I mean, there's a company that does that. This is called the consumer instinct, right? 
And we women happen to be really good at it because we kind of know what value is, right? Okay. So like just to take a simple example, um, when I've gone to Kohl's, this was years ago, Kohl's right now is dead. But years ago I went to Kohl's during Christmas time in New York. And there were lines around to pay, and they give you money, and the employees seemed happy. And I thought, wow, I like shopping here. So I wonder what the stock is doing. And that's how it starts, with an idea. So instead of just saying, I got my dress at TJ Maxx, TJ Maxx looks crowded, there's your thought. Maybe I should look at the TJ Maxx stock. So that's called the consumer instinct, or buy what you know. So some people like to buy a particular product they, that they like. Like, for example, the Apple, when that first came out, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden everybody was wearing white headphones, and then all of a sudden there was a touch screen. That was a pretty good idea that, you know what, this company may be hot. Let me look at the stock. So it really starts with an idea that you may have of something you like and something you know. That's how I like to talk, especially to women, because women are shopping all the time. Kroger, perfect example. Smith's. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, when they first started Click List and they were really rocking it out the park, you know, where you can go there and pick up your food and they extended the amount of parking spots, I looked at the stock. That's where the book comes in, because the stock may not be ready to buy, so if you know the phase it's in, which is really simple, then you can say, good phase, time to buy, bad phase, I'll sit this one out. Now that's very interesting. Does, is that comprehensible? Oh, very extremely. Oh my God. I just started going through my head going, ooh, Amazon. But you know, Amazon right now is through the roof. Right, exactly. So Amazon, you kind of missed the boat on that. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. But but five years ago, when people, old people, I went out to a party and the people were like old, like 70s, 80s, 90s, and they were talking about, they were, oh, I'm shopping on Amazon now, I'm buying everything on Amazon. That's when I realized, you know what, there's something to this Amazon. And at that point, you know what it was trading? 300. Where it's trading now? Like 3,000. So, yeah, yeah. too rich for my blood. Exactly. I wouldn't get involved in Amazon right now. In fact, I think it's kind of saturated. And Jeff Bezos actually just left just, the company. Yeah, just right. Completely. But I would think about things. We live in New Mexico. Virgin Galactic is in New Mexico. They're starting to take trips. So that stock is called Space. S-P-C-E. I'm looking at it because it's in New Mexico. Sounds like a great idea. And you have uh, Branson. Richard Branson mm -hmm. is involved in it. Smart guy. Billionaire. That's a stock to be looking at right now. By the way, the Reddit kids got their hands on that and drove the price up a little bit. But still, that's the kind of thing when I started looking at it. It was trading at $18. It's now at $56. Ooh. Right. So it's not that tough to find things and then decide, is it too rich for my blood? Right. That's, yes. a, that's common sense. I mean, because if you're going to like, I mean, if you're going to like buy some stuff, I think you would want to like come in with at least $500. I think that's probably a good start, but that's what I'm saying. You're, you can do that now because you don't have to, you used to have to buy something with a little money and pay most of it in commission. You don't have to do that anymore. They got what, rid of the commission. What does that mean? In other words, if I want to buy five shares of Amazon, mm -hmm. for each share I buy, the brokerage company that I'm buying the trade from, whether it's like TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Merrill Lynch, whatever it is, they charge me a commission, a fee, for making that trade. Ooh. Right. So you may make $100 and then pay $50 in commissions. Right. So they've eliminated that right now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> exactly. This is one of the reasons why we're seeing this retail investing explosion right now is because it's affordable. It's really bringing in the little guy, so to speak. Actually, if I was going to invest in something, I personally would invest in a liquor store. Do liquor stores, well, not the stores themselves, but the liquor brands, uh -huh. have gone berserk during the pandemic. Uh, hello? Yeah, everybody was home drinking. Total wine. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> so total wine. Are they like... Uh, well, you know, they are a corporation. Are they a publicly traded company? I don't know. I'd have to come I'm telling you. Now, don't y'all go out there and jump on the bandwagon, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't drive the price up before I give me at least five shares. <laughs> Good God. But there are other liquor companies that have done very well. And let's talk about the other side of liquor. Cannabis. Oh! Hello. 
Hello. And you know, New Mexico legislature, you know, they're trying to really get that one going this year. Absolutely. And all of a sudden now with a, a president that is a Democrat, with a Senate that's got a slight majority Democrat, and the House that's Democrat, you've been now getting a lot more buzz about legalizing pot on a federal level. And even if, what they may do is instead of doing that, they may let each state legalize it, but the federal government won't get in the way. Right now they're in the way because it's still right. illegal and, and you can't bank it or stay, et cetera, et cetera. But that, you want to talk about buy what you know? Hello. <laughs> My goodness. You know, I, another one that I just thought about. Right. And it just left me. I gave a complete flipping brain fart. I get those. I'm old. Um, but no, this is very, very interesting, you know. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers were, are interested, you know. So, well, I would love to hear some ideas. If, if you want to say anything, Brandy, yes, checking if, the phones. If you have any, any questions, pro, right, exactly. Please. But, but let's talk about categories, right? Yes. Because that's, it's not just a product, right? There could be a social trend. Like cannabis is actually a trend, it's, and it's a product as well. But we're looking at also some other social trends. Like, for example, what's come out of this pandemic, right? The Zoom stock, for example, went crazy. Facebook went crazy. Now it's actually come down a little bit. But you want to think like what company? So today they had an IPO, which means it was an initial public offering. The stock went public for the first time today. Bumble. You know what Bumble is? I've heard of it. It's the new dating app driven yes. by women. First one. The CEO is a woman. And it came out today, it was supposed to trade at $43 a share. It opened up at $76 a share. So it's a little bit high right now. But that's something that, gee, is that a trend? Dating apps where women drive it? I'd say, yeah, right? It's oh, the yeah. first one. I mean, Tinder is younger people, but, but this bubble, uh, Bumble, Bumble. Bumble is really geared for women and run by women. So I always like to look at women-owned companies as a future trend because women are getting more and more and more involved with business women are entering the boardroom more um and women are now becoming more and more involved in trading i get calls every day from women how do i start trading i want to follow you i trust you you're a woman that kind of thing right and with 40 years in the business i mean you know exactly what you're doing well one of the big things that happened to me thank you one of the big things that happened to me this year uh, in the last year has been uh, i've been on the media a lot so if you go to my Facebook page, Michelle Schneider, you'll see sometimes I'll post like Fox Business, mm -hmm. and I'm on every week on Fox Business, Cheddar TV, Yahoo Finance, TD Ameritrade, oh my God, it goes Russian TV, China TV, Australian TV, and that's been really great because it's given me a platform like you're giving me today, that is, so appreciate, well, to talk to people. Yes, hello, and oh my gosh. Them, and make it not so scary. You know, so basically what I say to people is this. You don't want to trade your rent money. Okay, maybe during COVID you could, but once you have to start paying rent, you don't want to do that. So you want to have some, what we call, discretionary money. Mm -hmm. If you lose it, it doesn't mean you can't feed your kids, right? Or keep so, a roof over your or head. Or keep a roof over your head or, or go to the liquor store or buy your local weed, whatever it is that you want. So it has to be money that you don't mind losing. And that's a very important mindset. Not that you plan to lose, but you have to detach from the money. Right. Right? And so what's so interesting, and, and this is another thing I really like to tell people because it's so much about human nature. We are really programmed to fail. We are not programmed to succeed. And it goes way back to the beginning of time. I understand that. Yeah. Right? Failing, we all kind of expect it, right? The old Murphy's law. And winning it happens to us, what's the first thing we think? Oh, can't be. Oh, it's not going to last. Oh my God. I better like pray to God. I better do this. I better have my crystals. I better have this. Because it can't possibly last. And by the way, I have all that stuff. You know? <laughs> I do pray and I do have my crystals and I do wear my lucky charm. I have one on right now. But basically, I do that more because it reminds me that it's okay to succeed. The universe has no bias on your succeeding. Your mental state is where what we call the monkey brain prevents us from succeeding. So that's why going back to money, mm -hmm. if you think, ah, I don't need
previously, it actually frees your mind up to think more of abundance and scarcity. Okay. I like that train of thought. I can get with that. Totally. Yeah. Well, it's so really, so we're putting it together being really simple. Think about what you know. Try to get a little bit of an education of, of value, and we can use you can use a basic chart like that. Put up money that you don't necessarily mind losing. Think in terms of abundance, and think to yourself, you know what? I deserve to succeed, and if you start failing, cut it. See, people, what they do with trading is they buy something. Let's say they don't know what the heck they're doing. Let's use GameStop. Okay. GameStop went from two dollars to five hundred dollars. You know how many people bought it at five hundred dollars, thinking this possibly can't go down? A lot. A lot of people. And so all that money that was made on the way up was lost plus plus on the way down. So really, basically, what you have to do when you go into trading and investing is you have to say, "I'm going to cut my loss here." Again, put your ego away and just think. Like a computer, think like you would do if all of a sudden you lost your wallet. You would like, I don't want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I know where my wallet is at all times. So the same thing with money. I want to make sure that if it goes down this much against me, because this is all I can afford, I'm out. And I look at it again. When it starts to go up in my favor, I want to make sure I lock in money and play with house money. So if I invest a hundred dollars and I make a hundred dollars. I may take that hundred dollars off the table and still have some on there, and now I'm playing house money, just like gambling, except that it has nothing to do with gambling, because this is a very structured thing to do. Yeah. But it's all the same kind of mindset. So really, that's why I say it's not as scary as one would think, and the opportunities are all over the place right now because of all this new tech that's coming out,、mm -hmm. and all these IPOs, and all these what they call special purpose acquisition companies that are helping companies get started. So look at electric cars. Look at lithium batteries. Look at electricity distribution because we're going to use a whole shitload of it now that there are so many electric cars. Look at food, which has been going up, and agri tech. Okay, and speaking of that one, Robert Alexander Gonzalez asks, <laughs> "Can you invest in healthy food?" Absolutely, you can. So right now, I mean, Beyond Meat's been the big stock, right? But there's another one called Tattoo Chef. That、um, I I don't know the some T T C F I think it is I'll have to check on the on the symbol of that, but there are many ways right now and there are many more companies that are coming out for you to be able to invest in healthy foods. I'm looking right now at ag tech, which means agricultural technology, and there's one company that I've been really hot about. So it's kind of on on Robert's thought here. It's called App Harvest. This just went public last week. What this guy is doing in Kentucky is he's growing in greenhouses because he's figured out a way to do this cheaply. Fruits and vegetables. Right now he's just started with tomatoes, but he's going into fruits and vegetables, and then he's going to take those fruits and vegetables and distribute them. They're all going to be healthy, organic, and cheaper than what you get in the store because he's going to eliminate the third party, right? The the, the supermarket, and he's going to deliver directly to schools. And and in other types of places, this is so forward thinking because it's thinking about how can I use technology to grow more food and make it cheaper and make it healthy, not GMOs, not GMOs. So, wow! I hope that helped you, Robert. <laughs> Hi, Robert. And thank you for asking. <laughs> hello,、um, I, I should say hello, Jennifer and Troy. They're coming to us from Texas tonight. Oh, hi. Yes, I, 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 I know. I'm sorry. I'm a little slow. I didn't like get it on to my phone so I could see it and like check out who's watching where. But yes, we love to see all of our family out there. Cheers to you guys. <laughs> you had that in my thoughts too. <laughs> Things of going forward, right? The fact that we've had this pandemic and we still haven't come out of it yet fully, so then you also maybe want to think in terms of the think what you know kind of stuff. What has been under pressure because of the pandemic, but could actually come back? Airlines. Okay. Okay. Some restaurant chains, definitely. And then what kind of restaurant chains? Will people be going more for fast food now? 
Probably not. People are going to want to start going to restaurants. So you want to look at certain restaurant chains and what company owns them. I'm trying to think for an example here. Um, Yum, which owns, I think, Pizza Hut and a couple of others. That's more fast food. And I can't think off the top of my head here. I, I was thinking like P.F. Chang's or something. P.F. Chang's, like, right. You know, um, the steakhouse thing. What's it that? The steakhouse chain. Oh, my God. It's a, it doesn't even matter. Morton Steakhouse. Morton Steakhouse. Now, so that all you have to do is you have to say, I think that when people come back, they're going to eat more sushi. And their sushi, though, maybe is going to be a little bit different. Maybe now there will be more drive-by sushi kind of thing. Because there's actually a su su sushi fast food movement going on in Japan, where the classic expensive sushi restaurants are going out of business, and more cheaper sushi, because sushi mm -hmm. got so expensive, because fish got so expensive. So you look into some of those stocks. You just go online and you say, stocks that trade restaurants. And about something that you like and you know. This is all what I'm talking about. There is a lot of opportunity right now. A ton of it. Okay. Here's another question okay. from Kate Carswell. And she's right here in Santa Fe. Hi, Kate. Hi, Kate. <laughs> she asks, um, given the pandemic, are there countries you would recommend investing in and some you would not recommend as part of a portfolio? Oh, what a very sophisticated question. Oh, she's very sophisticated. <laughs> she's from Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. Well, hi, Kate. Great question. As, and, and actually, it's something that I've been talking about. So really what you're talking about is emerging markets, right? And right now in our portfolio, we are in uh, South Korea and China. So the Asian countries are continuing to do well. They may be a little extended if you looked at a chart and you go, oh my God, they've already gone up so much. But if you think about how China is performing relative to the U.S. and how China is growing relative to the U.S., China is still cheap. That's an ETF called FXI. I also today, as a matter of fact, was looking at two other countries, Brazil, which has agricultural product that China needs. They grow soybeans. They, you know, that's a big, big export to China. So you may want to look at Brazil and also Greece. I was looking at Greece when it was really cheap, when Greece was having all those problems. And now Greece has gotten through that. And I think, again, as a travel destination, mm -hmm. Greece economy can prosper from this. So I would look at that one. That's Grek, G-R-E-K. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on, those, those, those few areas right now. And then uh, Terry Graves asked, what about dog companies? Dog? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a new there's a new IPO coming out, and it's going to be dog sitting services. It's a company that sends people out for dog sitting. You know, right now, how hard it is to find a good dog sitter. This will be a corporate owner. I mean, we could talk about the fact that private business versus corporations could be, you know, corporations the evil thing. But nonetheless, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about making money. And I think uh, you have Petco, of course, which is already, uh, and Chewy, by the way, went crazy this year and I realized every pet product I bought this year came from Chewy.com right just buy what you know right so this one I think is called pet.com I would check me on that but it's a dog sitting service that's about to go public wow and I would have never thought to, thought about that you know I mean like dogs I mean their pets their pets have become the like the major players right this year this last year you know, if you have pets, they have been spoiled rotten. Not only have you been at home with them 24-7, but they have gotten toys and food and treats out the wakuku. I know, we <laughs> tend to take better care of our pets than we do of ourselves. And yeah. especially in bad times. Oh, it, it's just absolutely amazing. And I, you know, I'll be honest, I thought several times during this pandemic, oh, maybe I'll get a pet. <laughs> And then I wake up, <laughs> and I say, I have plenty of pets. Here's one of them now. <laughs> See? Good baby. Good baby. And I say, stay. It doesn't talk back. It doesn't poo. It doesn't mess with my shoes. Honey, I love my pets. <laughs> That's awesome. By the way, eternity. I, I thought so, bro. I remember those. <laughs> um, hold on. Comp competing with Rover.com. What is Rover.com? 
I don't know. I don't either. I, is that a publicly traded company? Oh, that's, uh, see, that's the question. There are plenty of companies, but they're privately owned companies and you can't trade them. So the whole idea is to find one that actually you can trade on the stock market or look for these new IPOs. Again, buy what you think is hot and good. And where do you find these IPOs? I just about this week. So that's how I knew that Bumble was coming out today. That's how I knew this one, Pet.com, mm -hmm. is coming out soon. Uh, there's a couple of others that, that, I, that I'm not going to remember right now at this time of night. But that's what I do is I look and I see. And if I go, you know what, this sounds like something that I think is going to be a really hot trend, then I will watch it. Oh, my goodness. I know what I'm doing later tonight. <laughs> Googling IPOs, honey. Huh? Googling IPOs. <laughs> yes, I am. So, um... Kate also said Countrywide. Are you familiar with Countrywide? The mortgage company? Uh-huh. I didn't even know they still existed. Um, <laughs> Kate, do they still exist, darling? Hello, Charles. Hi. <laughs> Charles Mondragon. You know Chucky. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't know, but if you're looking at mortgage companies, um, I would be careful there because the interest rates right now are very, very low. And even though the Federal Reserve is saying that they're going to keep them low, the yields, which means the short-term interest rates have actually started to creep up a little bit. And the mortgage rates have actually gotten a little bit more expensive. And actually, there's a statistic you can see every week how many people applied for a mortgage. And that number has actually gone down over the last couple of weeks, even though house sales have gone up. So there's a whole other metric between interest rates, buying a house, how much is on the market, supply, demand, all of that relates to each other. So I wouldn't necessarily look at mortgage companies. However, I wish I had thought of this Zillow. Zillow, right? Yeah. Zillow stock has just gone berserk. And I get like daily emails from Zillow. I didn't even tell them that I wanted them, but I'm somehow I'm still getting Zillow Five houses you might be interested in, and everybody's looking on Zillow right now. Everyone. So, right. So in terms of the real estate market, I would be looking at some of the hot trends that might be happening in real estate. Again, people doing more and more and more stuff online, and if Countrywide's going online, that might be something, but they have a lot of competition right now. Um, Kate, um, she edited her little... She goes, I meant um, Rover is countrywide. <laughs> oh, I thought Rover had to do with the stock. I, I, did, you know, I thought she made the comment about, after I said, sit, boo-boo, sit. <laughs> um, thank you, Jerry. I love these two, honey. Uh, and hello, Miss Alethea in Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. You yes. Uh -huh. I, I was there once. I fell in the mud. In Houston? Yes. <laughs> oh, girl, I've been in Houston. Alethea and I turned the city yellow, green, pink, purple, orange, and everything under the moon. We had fun, girl, did we not? <laughs> Where are you from originally? Oh, I'm from Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good old land of virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the spokes model. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so much information. That's a lot of information. This is true. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. Jennifer McHugh. Oh, my girl. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Miss Nancy. Hello, Nancy, darling. Welcome. Um, ooh, I'm a little far. It's Trapiche. It's a Chardonnay. Old cast. 2007 Mendoza Argentina <laughs> yes and I'm drinking good old Santa Fe still water <laughs> she's being good for right now y'all yeah, exactly. she's like I can't do that and talk I said girl I can <laughs> yes I can so if you guys have any other questions for us for Michelle because you know she's here to answer your questions feel free to ask honey Hello, Miss Sheriff in Virginia. Ho, ho, Richmond. You know, people are sometimes afraid to ask a question because they think the question is going to be stupid. Really? Oh, no question no, is stupid. No, no, no. I can believe right. I ask all kinds of stupid questions. <laughs> well, actually, when it comes to money, there is no such thing as a stupid 
interesting question. It's your money. You right? need to know. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing I want to say about investing is that it really is equaling the playing field, especially now with all these young retail investors getting involved. Because it doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, what country you're from, what color you are, what sex you are, whatever you identify with. Money is just currency. It follows it's the path. green. It's green, and it follows the path of least resistance, right? That's why when you get a leak, you think it's leaking over there, but really it's leaking over there, but it's dripping over here because the money found that way, the water found that way right there. So money is like water. And so it's really important to understand that this is a really good time to be asking questions because this is the best bastion of capitalism, of, of the free, free market that we still have. Yes, there's corporate control. Yes, there's the Securities Exchange Commission and the regulators, and there's Janet Yellen looking into Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin, let's talk about Bitcoin. Um, but nonetheless, ultimately, there is still a free market. And so if you want to better yourself in life, you can try to get yourself two jobs. You can try to climb up the corporate ladder. You can do all of that. And at the same time, you can also learn a little bit about investing. I'll just give you an example that um, somebody like my mom, who's 87 years old, she said, let me give you 25000 Now I take care of my mom, so it's not like she needed the money, but she wanted to trade through us and see how her money would grow. $25,000 is what she gave us, and now it's at $40,000 in just a couple of months. Now, $25,000 may sound like a lot to you, and it is a lot, but still, that's a huge percentage increase in a very short period of time. So you have to make that relative to whatever it is you can afford. So if you start with 1000 and after a few months you're at $2,500, that's, that's a win-win. That's a win-win, and you're not going to get that money in the bank because you don't get any interest in the bank right now. So there you go. That's why I'm really, really passionate, if you can't tell, okay. about this, about trying to get it, the word out to people that there are people like me out there you can ask questions and there are definitely ways right now to get in without a lot of money invested because of this free commission thing that's going on. Okay, here's another question and this is from Chris Boswick. Hi Chris darling, we must do lunch soon. <laughs> he asks, how do we anticipate a market correction with the new administration economic plan? Okay, well, I don't really see much of an economic plan right now. I think the new administration has their hands full with the pandemic. And right now there's a whole other distraction, as we know, going on in the government with the impeachment, which we won't get into, because really the bottom line is this. Politics have no place in your investment decisions. Really, they don't. Because what you think might happen doesn't happen. For example, let's take a look at Tesla. Everybody hated Elon Musk. Everybody hated the stock. They said the company would never make money. How could this even be? They call him a hypocrite, except the stock keeps going up and up and up and up. So I wouldn't get too bogged down on the Biden administration and their policy, but I think you probably are referring to the idea of a possible tax raise and the idea of the $15 minimum wage. And a lot of people are screaming that's going to kill the market, it's going to kill the economy. It may hurt a little bit if they raise taxes, but there's no real talk about it right now, number one. And in terms of the $15 minimum wage, I look at it as part of just what happens in society. There are always going to be companies that go obsolete, and that's going to happen regardless, and you can blame the minimum wage if you want, but there's also going to be more consuming going on because people will have a little bit more money to spend, mm -hmm. two sides of every coin. And the other thing is, you know what's killing jobs more than anything? automation. And that's not going to be stopped. So I'm doing because right now Biden is not even focused on the stock market. But you know who is? Janet Yellen and uh, Jerome Powell, the guy who's the head of the Fed. You know, Janet Yellen, first woman Treasury Secretary, mm -hmm. used to be the head of the Fed. They want to keep money flowing. They want to get the economy going. They want to see, she's saying, a full labor market by 2022. We'll see that might be optimistic, but nonetheless, right now, I don't think the Biden administration is really worrying about all of that or how to pay for anything. That's why the debt keeps going up and the money supply keeps going up and economists are screaming, this is a bubble, it's a bubble, it's a bubble, 
so far no bubble. Okay. You know, I, I remember what I was going to ask, you know, <laughs> about investing. What about investing in Pfizer or Moderna? Mm. Great question. Great question. Well, Moderna's a little rich right now, but Pfizer, interestingly enough, hasn't gone anywhere. In fact, I looked at the stock price today. It was trading at $34.95. Right? Cheap. I think Moderna's like a 178 or something like that, $178. And that's because Moderna was the first rollout of the vaccine. Pfizer, actually, I was listening to a guy today when I was getting ready to be on Yahoo Finance. There was a guy before me. He was talking about Pfizer as a great investment right now because he believes that the company will earn profits with the rollout of their version of the vaccine, which the one shot appeals to me way, way, way more than the two shots. Oh. What about you? Oh, I got the two. You got the two. I'm a Pfizer bitch. <laughs> Five down, honey. Five down. <laughs> I'm good to go. So what I would say is you could look at Pfizer right now. It's sitting there around 34. It hasn't really gone much. It's been trading between like $34 and $38, $39 for a couple months now. So that gives you a base. And you know what? Tomorrow, that shit's going to shoot up because 10 of y'all out there are going to go buy it right now. <laughs> well, if you buy it, just like we've been talking about, Make sure, first of all, that you know what your risk is and how much you're planning to risk. Because, you know, hey, listen, anything can go down. So if you're going to buy it around $35, let's say, if you can only risk about a dollar, it hasn't broken down under $34, then get out if it breaks $34. If you can give it a little more room, I'd say probably to $30. Risk about $4 or $5. Why? Because if it does go up, it probably has a lot more room on the upside. So if you're going to only risk, and when I say risk, do you understand what risk means? Uh-huh. Okay. You don't want to lose more than $5. So if you buy 10 shares, that means you don't want to lose more than 50 bucks, right? So uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to double how much you're willing to lose to make. So if you're going to risk $5 in Pfizer, that means you want to make $10. You want to try to make double. Yeah. So that means you think that maybe Pfizer would go to 45. If it does, take some profit. Don't take it all off the table, but take some profit. But now, don't risk anything anymore. Either say if it gets back down to 35, I'm out. Or maybe this time since it broke 40 and that was such a key level, $40, it took so long to get through it. Now if it gets back down under 40, I'm gone. And that's really the very simplest way that I can think of to explain making an investment exactly what you ask in something you know, something that's hot, and something that's trendy. Okay, Ben. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any, uh, um, I, I'm just looking down. I, um... Oh, what about capital? I mean, your um, account capital gain impact. <laughs> oh, you mean talk tax? Capital gain tax? Yes. Yeah, well, um, well, right now, capital gain tax is still under the Trump uh, code, which is very cheap. And yes, again, there has been threats about capital gain ca tax increases. But I don't worry about things until they happen. I just don't. I don't plan. See, most people, when you listen to the media, they'll scare you. They'll scare you because that's... Shitless. Shitless, right. Because that's what, that's what sells. Let's be scared of Biden raising taxes. Let's be scared of the capital gains tax rise. Let's be scared of inflation. Let's be scared of this. Let's be scared of that. Let's be scared of the boogeyman. Right. Let's be scared of the mutation in the virus and the variants in the virus and the vaccine not working. Let's be scared of, you know, Asians, which is horrible. I was just reading in California. Oh, yes. In San Francisco, all the Asians that are being attacked on the streets. On like Chinese, the elderly. Right. And they're trying this is Chinese New Year tonight. Year of the Ox. So, yes. I mean, Happy New Year. Right. The media will mess with your head. So I say, could there be a capital gains tax? There could be. But it ain't happening now, so don't worry about it. Don't prevent that from making to invest and make some money. Go in there and then worry about it later. That's there you go. Motto. You heard it here. Right, I don't you heard it <laughs> right here on Brandy Live. Can we talk? Just get after it. What? I don't I don't think that answers the question. Well, he's asking about is there gonna be a capital gains tax? Is that your question? Well, there is a capital gains tax. Well, right, but what it, it is. He's asking what it is? No. No, Kate, Kate asking. When, when Kate is asking, take into account capital gains impact in your decision. 
Oh, do I? Or should one? Oh, I am so... Well, I, you know what? I'm glad I had the capital gains tax conversation with you anyway, because really the bigger point is that don't worry about all these things that could happen, because the media will make sure you worry about them, and I don't, no, no, until no, no, they do. No. But in terms of should you think about capital gains tax when you make an investment, I don't. I don't. I'd much rather make the money, and if I have to pay a chunk to Uncle Sam, so be it. You know, there's a book that's called You Can Heal Your Life. You ever heard of the Louise Hayes? Mm -hmm. and, well, it's, a, it's an old book from, like, I think the 70s or something. And in this book, she talks a lot about money, and she talks a lot about how different things that go wrong with our body have to do with our emotional state. Like, for example, if you get lung cancer or breast cancer or a heart attack, it usually means you've had some grief and heartache in your life, mm -hmm. and it manifests that way. And a lot of the manifestation comes from worrying about your bills. And she says, learn to love your bills. Because what do your bills mean? That you actually are living a good enough life to pay bills. So the street, homeless, you got bills, you got a roof, you got to pay the rent, you got to pay the light, if electricity, you got to pay for your food. And it's the same thing with the capital gains tax. Love your capital gains tax, because it means you're making money. And then Kate just um, said, when you sell. When you sell, well, right, yes. But I wouldn't make, I, but that's a whole other conversation. That, that, and that's, not, that's that like all, down the road. That's passive investing, and we don't want to talk about that, right? Yeah, now. no, girl, we want to just invest, invest, yeah, invest. And, and take your money when you make it. And there you go. And don't worry about all that stuff. Yeah. And I need to say hello to William Likes in Scottsdale, Arizona. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and to Miss Barbara Hurley. Girl, it was so much fun hanging with you on Super Bowl Sunday. I love you. Um, this conversation could go on and on. Oh, my goodness, yes. I'm just loving it, y'all. <laughs> Does anyone else out there have a question, a stimulating question for Miss Michelle or one for me that I might help you with? <laughs> Cause you know I got the answer right. <laughs> well, you you asked some great questions, so you definitely got some. I got questions, girl. I ain't said I got the answer. Yeah, but the questions come from you being thoughtful about them. Oh well, this is true. Yes. You know, and so tonight I'm being very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. I would like to share with you all. So when we're done with all of this, you know, first of all, Mama made. Uh, um, a mixed berry cobbler, Ooh. vegan style, because Miss Michelle here is vegan, and so I did a surprise vegan dessert for her, but we're having tonight, because it only takes like five minutes for each course, so I was like, well, there's no need to cook it now, <laughs> when we're done, we'll just cook. Right, you know, uh -huh. and drink. And I'll help you. Oh, girl, no, because my kitchen's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand in the doorway. And talk. And stuff. Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> um, but hold on, they may have questions here. Oh, Robert uh, uh, Gonzalez has a question. <laughs> Buddy, I miss you. Oh, and I owe you a vegan meal. And Robin mm -hmm. says, "Are there an LGBTQ investment area?" You know, it's so funny you should ask that question because I thought about that too when I was on my way here. Um, I was thinking, you know, I, it's so great to be able to branch out to all audiences. Like I said, the market doesn't care what you are, what you believe in. And at this point, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know, but it's something that I will look into. It. You know, really what you want to do is see if there's any publicly traded company that would cater to that community. Um, I know that, let's say, for example, certain cruise lines will have cruise lines specific, but uh, for obvious reasons, but that would be something to look at. So let's say it's Carnival, I'm just saying this off the top of my head, that has special cruises for the LGBT audience, then I would say, yeah, maybe look at, at Carnival Cruise right now, CCL is the stock symbol. Um, you know, again, it's buying what appeals to you. And yes, the community is getting larger and getting more, for lack of a better word, mainstream. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually when, when gay marriage got passed, there was a huge surge in things that had to do with weddings. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And we looked into stocks that had to do with weddings and travel and honeymoons because now you had a whole new group of people who were planning weddings and honeymoons and it was a great thing at that time now, obviously now everything has come off because of the fact that we've had the COVID world but yeah I think that's a great question and it's something I personally will look into and if I see something Robert I'll let you know
I will too, Robert. Because, you know, we got to plan our wedding, darling. <laughs> oh, wait, no, you're married already. Never mind. But you got a friend that's looking for a bride. Hello. I mail order. Just saying, just putting it out there. And that's M A I L, right? Uh huh. M A L E. Yeah, all of it. All of it. Oh, M A I L. That's the one. Mail order. <laughs> okay, Chardonnay. <laughs> Lord have mercy, girl. That took a minute, huh? <laughs> well, I got you, girl. I got you. Hello, Miss Linda J. Jones. Girl, I, I'm loving you. Yes. So, can we talk about the fact that we can get back into the restaurants, even though it's 25%, but the fact that we can get back. You know, we just need to be responsible and respect what where we're going and wear a mask until there's actually a drink in front of you, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I can't wait. I just cannot wait to go back into a restaurant. I mean, I've loved all the cooking that I've done, and we've been eating so healthy. Oh, girl. Uh, we're going to eat healthy tonight. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So tonight, <laughs> we're going to start with a little warm kale salad. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's going to steam a little kale, you know, do a little thing with it, a little thing, a little thing. <laughs> and then we're going to have a stir fry. Ooh. A little veg vegetable stir fry. <laughs> I'm so excited. Girl, I bought a wok and everything to cook. Are you serious? For, For real. Wow. Three cookbooks. Thank you. Wow. I committed to when I have people over. I ask <laughs> person I say do you have any food allergies can you eat everything what do you drink say red wine and say gruet because that's what I got <laughs> and thank God drinking is vegan <laughs> oh thank God <laughs> Ooh, girl I was getting ready to say <laughs> Lord have mercy I didn't know if you would ha like to have a cocktail because I was like I got vodka I got whiskey I got rum. Yeah, well, I'll probably just join you in some good old red wine. Oh, fair. And tonight's red wine is by Tom Schuler. <laughs> yes. So, you, you remember that I was doing that dry January? Yeah. Well, just at the end of my dry January journey, try saying that ten times without tripping on it. <laughs> dry <laughs> January journey. What the H-E double. Anyway, the last two days... I came home from work, honey, and there was a case of red of wine outside my door. I said, hallelujah. The gods understand. Is that from, from whole, from, uh... Oh, no, it, I'm in a wine club. Oh, you're in a wine and, club. Yeah. I didn't have anything, and so I kept building up my, and so they're like, oh, we got a case for you. I'm like, send it away. <laughs> and is it all the same? Oh, like, no. It's a mixed case, oh, cool. and this is one of the bottles from it. How is it, Keith? Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Excellent. It's a Merlot, and I'm not a big <laughs> Merlot fan, but, you know, hey, I'm willing to try anything once or twice. <laughs> Hello, Miss Susan LaPointe, Colorado, the house. So oh, we had had, Hello. yes, so we had had Colorado, <laughs> Texas, Virginia, Pennsylvania, I'll check in tonight. Yay. I've been wanting to say congratulations to you, Susan, so now I get the chance. I'm so happy for you. I miss you. Oh, my God. You know, she needs to come visit. She keeps going to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she keeps going to Florida, but, you know, she never can come to Santa Fe. And bring my baby girl. I miss my little Gabaline. In fact, it's through Susan that I met you. Yes, and, and, and Taylor. Taylor. Right. <laughs> Another stock to look at. Oh, I did have an Ann Taylor stock when I worked there. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, interesting. Yes, interesting. I had it. I had I had a good share because they matched, you know, you put in and they would match it. And then when I left Ann Taylor, I was like, I'm done with that. You know, I want to go back to, since we're talking about uh -huh. consumer economy. So in terms of trends, you know, America is definitely a consumer economy and always has been. China, though, used to be more of a manufacturing and industrial economy, and now women, who they say in China hold up the sky, 
they have become so powerful in China and they are the hugest consumers in China and what they are demand they are making demands on what they want to buy and they want to buy the best the best beauty products the best food so right now all these companies that are feeding into this female consumer demand in China is another place to be looking at by the way especially I'm talking to you Katie who are interested we've been looking at a lot of those stocks too uh, and it's amazing what's going on in China because also what happens is, and you know, we all do this, right? You think about like, oh, you search, I don't know, shoes, let's say. Next thing you know, you're hit with like 15 ads, right? On Facebook. Oh my God. Right. If you click on that one that you say one thing about something, next thing you know, every person that deals with that is sending you something. You're like, well, you know what that's called? It's called data collection. That's what that's called. So you've got all these algorithms that are following your tastes and then sending you things that are similar. Those actual data collection companies are also publicly traded stocks. Hello. <laughs> right? Hello. You heard it here first. Right. Data collection. Big data collection. Huge. Getting bigger. So that would be another thing area to be looking for. So this is why I'm always thinking like, what's hot, what's growing, what's hot, what's growing, and data collection, especially with China, and still here too, is growing. And there's a great stock for that, by the way. It's called Data Dog. Data Dog. Data, data Dog. dog. Data, data Dog. And Data Dog symbol is D D O G. I like anything with a dog in it, and it happens to be a really good company. Ain't nothing but the dog <laughs> in me. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, this is just so much fun. Oh, fun. I am so glad you have been here, Michelle. You know, we may have to pick this up on a, a, at a later time during the par, summer. Part two. Part two, honey, <laughs> yes. Because, you know, I'm doing par trois <laughs> of um, <laughs> fitness next week because it's midweek um, weigh-ins and stuff. So next week, this is the perfect segue, um, my guest will be... Mr. Sean Duncan, who is a coach at Orange Theory Fitness oh, cool. on Cordova by the Trader Joe Plaza. And he will be here to talk about fitness and how I've been doing because he's uh, my team leader for Team Black during our body challenge transformation. And, you know, every time, I'm sad to say this, I start here at my weight. And when we check in midway through, my weight's up here. <laughs> it's like eight pounds that comes in. What? Uh, oh, it's it's absolutely mind-boggling. And I just have to, like, I've done this, this is my third one. And I'm not going to disappoint. I, and then when we get to the end, I'm back down to where I wanted to get to. Is it because of muscle? It is. It's wow. the muscle. And you know how they say. Muscle weighs more than fat. Right. Well, all I see is fat. <laughs> okay? That's all I see. I'm going to let Sean talk me off the ledge. <laughs> right. But it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Kate, for your fabulous questions. And thank you, Robert. And everyone else who got a question in that I was able to get answered tonight. I look forward to seeing you all again and next week, same time, same place. Happy Black History Month again, yes. And I want to say, Sean Duncan, I cannot wait to see you here at Studio Brandywine 1A, yes. He will be here in this lovely seat, the hot seat, I like to call it. And on that note, we're going to say cheers. Thank Have a guys. blessed and beautiful evening, and thank you so much for joining us. I love her. <laughs> and God rest Mary Wilson. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, and all my family that died this week. Woo! Anyway, love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.